It's been just over a week now since we openly declared Moonbase 1 for the Terran Confederation, and we've been under daily missile attack ever since. I mean, I did receive a short reply from the Martian High Command saying something along the lines of The Martian Federation claim Earth and its moon, therefore my presence here is considered a hostile act, etc. So at least they did make it official before they started lobbing missiles at me and everything. Thankfully, we finished salvaging what's left of the Kutunahora several days ago, which is just as well, as we've needed the spare parts to both repair Moonbase 1, build new missiles of our own, and even make a start on this Firehawk aerospace fighter. Which is actually coming along... Oh, come on you two, move back a bit before you end up inside the projection. Or if you've stopped because you're out of components, just go and get some more. I'm your command. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the good news is that it's not just Moonbase 1. There's been a whole bunch of us here in the Soul System that have also come forward declaring for the Terran Confederation now, including the Triton Colony, Venus Orbital, Ganymede and Callisto, as well as many of the corporations that were initially neutral, which, I have to admit, has come as a pleasant surprise, to be honest. But with all that being said, we've still come under significant missile attack, which is why we've been building all these Kirkland mines. These are really just really basic kinetic kill vehicles designed to slam into incoming missiles well before they come into range of our point defence turrets. Because the more of them that we can neutralise before they get anywhere near Moonbase 1, the better. Anyway, whilst the repair bots are taking the scenic route for their components, I'd better get back to work. Warning, Captain Robertson. I have detected five capital-sized vessels using Martian Navy transponders that have just jumped into orbit above Moon Base 1. Copy that, Benson. I'll just wrap things up and head inside now. I was beginning to wonder what time they'd show up today. Danger. Danger, Captain Robertson. Missile launch detected. Oh, good grief. Here we go again. How many missiles do we have this time, Ben? I am currently tracking ten missiles inbound to Moon Base 1. Copy that, Benson. Launching all Kirkland mines. Damn it, we've only got eight, so here's hoping most of them hit. Otherwise, our point defence turrets are really going to have their work cut out for them. There they go. Fingers crossed. Repair bots one and two. This is Captain Robertson. We're under attack. Stop working and proceed to the plant room immediately. Yeah, ten missiles this time. This could be interesting, as I think this is the most they've actually launched against us so far. <laughs> well, that's what I get for telling General Maddox yesterday that I thought that the Martians were holding back. Yeah, everything's looking okay so far. I'll just reactivate the point defence turrets now and try to get a visual using the camera. And as expected, there's no sign of enemy vessels. Yeah, the Martians ain't stupid. They use their jump drives to arrive well outside the moon's orbit, they launch their missiles, and then they jump away again. Which means by the time I fire my own missiles and they get up there, they're already gone. Bastards. Ah, I'm seeing explosions up there. Benson, how many missiles did we get with our Kirkland mines? Captain, according to our sensors, 8 out of 10 missiles have been successfully intercepted. Excellent! That's a 100% hit rate this time. But let's not pat ourselves on the back just yet. We've still got two more of those things inbound. And here they come. Come on, turrets, take them out. Yes! That's both missiles destroyed. But damn, that second one came close. In fact, I saw some of its debris hit the landing pad, so I'd better get out there and see what kind of damage has been done. I mean, I'm not detecting any more enemy spacecraft or missiles out there, so it should be safe enough to venture back outside again. <laughs> yeah, famous last words again, Captain. Famous last words. Well, as I said earlier, the Martians are more than capable of launching a lot more missiles at us than this. So I don't know whether they're deliberately holding back in an attempt to test our defences first before a much larger strike, or if this is just an attempt to wear us down first before landing an assault force to try and capture Moonbase 1 for themselves. Because, let's face it, that really would be something of a symbolic victory for the Martians and boost their morale. Anyway, before I forget, Repair Bots 1 and 2, this is Captain Robertson. The attack is over. You're both free to return to the landing pad and continue your work. <laughs> yeah, I am tempted to build one or two more of those repair bots, especially now that we've got plenty of components to spare. 
All right, let's check out the damage. Actually, that's not too bad. All I need to do is replace some steel plates and everything should be okay. But that is to be expected given that it was just wreckage that bounced off the landing pad. Had it been a direct missile hit? Well, <laughs> let's just say I need more than a handful of steel plates, that's for sure. The one thing I couldn't help but notice with regards to all these recent attacks is the distinct lack of any ROS involvement. I mean, after what we did to their security teams and the Kutnohora, I half expected some kind of retaliatory action from them, but so far there's been no sight nor sound of ROS. Not that I'm complaining, of course, as it means one less enemy to fight. Yeah, I've collected a good amount of scrap from those damaged blocks. No worries, though, as the refinery will recycle that back into usable steel in no time. Anyhow, I'd better get back to work on the Firehawk. We've got a trade ship coming in from Interstellar Minerals later today, and I want something that's small, fast, and relatively disposable, built and ready so that I can ferry the cargo back and forth well before the next missile attack. Which means we'll need to act fast. Well, we're getting there, slowly but surely. Yep, the repair bots just love working on the exact same thing as me, even if it's not actually closer to them. But that's okay as it means I can spend more time supervising them and just chipping in when needed. Now, the reason why I have gone for the AS9 Firehawk instead of its younger brother, the Warhawk, is because it's a lot easier to build, having less moving parts and all that. Plus, with it being hydrogen only, it saves on uranium fuel. And it also means that if I ever get attacked and take any serious damage, there's less chance I'll lose anything valuable. Hey, we're almost done. I have to admit, I do like the Terran Confederation colours. They're very similar to the ones I used on the Prestinium and Valiant, except the Terrans use Ultramarine or Cobalt Blue instead of navy blue, and dark grey instead of black. But to be honest, I do actually prefer their lighter colours. Ah, uh, I need more metal grids for these, but you know what? The Firehawk looks almost done now anyway, so I reckon it's safe enough to let the repair bots finish this on their own. What I need to do is get back inside, briefly catch up on the news, take a quick shower, then try to get a few hours rest before that IMS trade vessel arrives. There we go, time to head back downstairs to my quarters and see what's going on in the galaxy. Captain. Repair bots 1 and 2 have completed construction of the small grid vessel and are awaiting further instructions. Copy that, Ben. Can you task them with building more Kirkland mines on the main landing pad? I think about 10 should suffice this time around, but just make sure that they space the mines out evenly. As you wish, Captain. Yeah, we don't want them colliding into each other on takeoff or anything. Okay, let's see what our enemies are saying about us today. I'll just transfer the headline I spotted earlier mentioning Moonbase 1 onto my PDA and take a quick read over it. The Pirate Moon. Renegade Privateer sets up base on Luna. Among the colonies declaring their allegiance to the Terran Renegades this past week, perhaps the most noteworthy was that of Moonbase 1. An abandoned outpost that has now apparently been taken over by none other than the Dread Pirate Robertson, a notorious agent of the Terran Renegades and wanted criminal. See attached. Okay, I'll check that out later. Among Robertson's most recent atrocities is the incident on Europa, where after killing the workers of a surface station, Robertson sent out a fake distress signal in order to lure a rescue team sent out by our ROS allies, whereupon shortly after landing he ambushed and ruthlessly slaughtered them all before stealing their spacecraft and finding refuge among the corrupt TCA marshals on Io. Those lying bastards! <sighs> The Martian Navy has issued a statement claiming that, as with all other rebellious colonies out there, Moonbase 1 will be dealt with soon enough, as well as the vile pirate that calls himself Captain Robertson. 
What a vile piece of sheer propaganda. Although this really shouldn't come as any surprise as I've more or less come to expect such deceitful drivel from what is essentially the state-controlled Martian news network. But at least it does give us an insight into what they're telling their own people, I suppose. Alright, let's take a look at the attachment that came with it. I'll just put it up on the main screen here. What in the name of hell? Those sons of bitches, look what they've done to me! Yeah, that's a recent mugshot picture alright, but look, they've edited it to give me a fake robotic eye and a ridiculous looking scar. And what is with all those skull and crossbones on my spacesuit? I mean seriously. And as for my supposed crimes, what an absolute joke. Yeah, I won't deny that I've destroyed their spacecraft and shot their personnel, but unless they didn't realise, a state of war does exist between us. But that pretty much sums up one of the main differences between the Terran Confederation and the Martian Federation, as we consider this a war and their personnel are legal combatants, but they refuse to do so, branding us instead as terrorists, pirates and renegades. Yeah, to us it's a war, but to them it's more like a police action or special military operation. Anyway, I've had enough of this. Right. I'm going to take a hot shower and try and unwind. I mean, I'm no stranger to being demonised, but this has really pissed me off. After that, then hopefully I'll get at least a few hours rest. Captain. I have just detected two capital-sized vessels using IMS transponders that had jumped into orbit above Moon Base 1. What time is it? Oh, these guys have arrived early. Copy that, Benson. I am on my way to operations and will be with you momentarily. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the IMS trade vessel here for another hour and ten minutes. But it's good that they're early, though, as it means it's less likely that they'll get caught by another Martian attack. Those only seem to come every 8 to 12 hours or so. But saying that, the time between each attack does seem to vary dramatically. Okay, let's take a look at them. There they are, a dromedary trade vessel called Profit Motive, and a B-60 called the Yellow Time Waster. They've not hailed us yet, probably being cautious, so I suppose I'd better do the honours. IMS Trade Vessel Profit Motive, this is Captain Robertson at Moonbase One. On behalf of the Lunar CDF, we would like to extend a friendly welcome and hope that we can open trade negotiations. Over. This is the IMS Trade Ship Profit Motive to Moonbase One. Thank you, Captain. Unfortunately, due to the likelihood of attack, I'm afraid that we will not be able to land or shuttle any cargo down to you. I hope this isn't an inconvenience. Over. Profit motive, this is Moonbase One. Not at all. We have a small aerospace craft available and everything I need shouldn't take up too much space. In fact, if it's okay with you, I can be up there very shortly to discuss this in person. Over. Roger that, Moonbase One. I look forward to meeting you in the guest lounge once you're on board. Profit motive, out. That sounds reasonable enough, and to be fair, I was half expecting them to say that. If we're ferrying the cargo back and forth, then it means that they can jump away at a moment's notice if any hostiles suddenly appear in orbit. I'll definitely be using the Firehawk though, as the Sagittarius is a lot slower and it's still packed in that crater to the northeast. But what I will need to do first is get suited up. Okay, the Firehawk has been sitting on that connector for over four hours now, so hopefully the propellant tanks will be full. If not, then I'd imagine that there should still be more than enough to get me into orbit and back again. Either way, I'll find out once I get on board. Huh, this is actually the first time I've used this walkway. Properly, of course. Alright, let's see what we've got. Ah, it is fully refueled. Excellent. Right, disconnecting the connector. Activating thrusters. Unlocking landing gear. And we're off. Perfect. Just as well I had Ben set up everything so that it was ready to go. That saved me so much time. I am having to get used to this constant 2G's worth of acceleration again though. 
Yeah, it's been a while since I've been in one of these. We use them to train our aerospace pilots for the CDF back on Terra Nova, but don't get me wrong, the AS-9 Firehawk still sees a lot of frontline service, and several of the corporate security forces make extensive use of them too. But that's only in the situations where you need a human pilot, otherwise it's much more effective and safer to use drones instead. Unless you're in the Martian Navy, of course, as they still love to use human-piloted starfighters for some reason. Although I strongly suspect that, along with their naming conventions, tends to be the result of the old-fashioned wet navy tradition that's ingrained among their officers and chiefs of staff. But as a wise man once said, never interrupt your enemy whilst they're making a mistake. Anyway, we're just coming up on the IMS spacecraft now, so I'd better move into a better position so that I can actually land inside the Prophet Motive's hangar bay without having to do any fancy manoeuvring. And there's the yellow time waster, which doesn't appear to be particularly well armed either, so I guess it's no wonder that they don't want to hang around. Oh hello, we've just received an automated request to slave our flight controls to the Profit Motive's docking computer. Well thanks for the offer, but I'm going to click the button to decline and select the option to land manually. I just prefer to do this part myself, especially in a spacecraft this small. Although, I have just noticed that their connector is on the top instead of the bottom, but that's okay, I'll land this way around first, and if they need me to use the connector later on, then that's fine. I'll come out and roll the Firehawk so that it's inverted. I'll just come back a bit. Yep, I think about here should do. There we are, landing gear locked. Now I just need to turn off the thrusters, and that should be it. Perfect! Aha! I thought I heard music. This area is pressurised. The hangar must have closed behind me, most likely either because of a sensor or somebody in a control room somewhere. Bad AI. <laughs> Tartaros as well, that's one of the big names. Ooh, an old trade console. Right, let's take a quick look at the prices. They're not bad, surprisingly. Still a little on the high side, but nowhere near as bad as that last trading station I visited. Anyway, enough messing around, I'd better head on up to the guest lounge. Ah. This'll be one of those weird anti-grav things, isn't it? Oh well, here goes. Whee! Oh, good grief. <laughs> that thing's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. You know, it's probably just as well I only had a Nutra bar for my breakfast this morning. Hi, sorry to bother you, but I'm looking for Captain Valentine. Huh? Ah, yes. She is in a meeting with the captain of my ship and her crew, but they shouldn't be too much longer. No worries, I'll just wait for her to finish. Thanks for the heads up, though. Well, I suppose it does give me time to have a quick look around. Uh, what does this say? Yeah, it's nothing particularly exciting. Just a generic welcome message, along with a stern warning reminding me to behave myself and to not attempt to grind anything down, lest of course I incur the wrath of the automated defences. <laughs> I doubt I'll be doing anything that foolish, to be honest. Ooh, an entertainment screen. I wonder if there's anything good on right now. Nah, it's just another advert for that Captain Hot or whatever his name is. It's a shame those two other guys he travelled with went their separate ways, though, as we never did get to see how their adventure ended. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Is that a real fish tank? Oh, hold on. I see what they've done. The tank, decorations and the water are all real, but the fish aren't. They're holograms. That's still very clever, though. Oh man, I would love to have something like this in Moonbase 1. Of course. But we only have the one station in Alpha Centauri, and they need those supplies urgently. 
Unless you want their deaths to be on your conscience too, Ryan. You know why one of our team players. We just need to be well compensated as all. Captain Robertson, welcome to the Profit Motive. I am Captain Catherine Valentine, and this is my colleague, Captain Ryan Mercury. Yes, your colleague and I have already met, haven't we, Captain? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think we have. Well then, allow me to jog your memory. Move it, prisoner, I ain't got all day. Followed by the butt of your rifle striking the back of my helmet and sending me flying face first into the European ice. And trust me, after that little stunt, it's probably a good thing that the guards had muted my helmet mic that morning. Oh wait, you're that political prisoner. Correct. Hey now, you gotta understand that it ain't personal, it's just business is all. I got a whole ship full of crew to take care of and I need to keep criminals in line and stuff. Oh, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure that my esteemed colleague's actions were due to a momentary lapse in judgment and that he regrets being so heavy-handed with our honoured guest, don't you? Well, I just... Yeah, forget it. It's all water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. Listen, Captain Valentine, as you were coming over, I couldn't help but overhear you mention Alpha Centauri. Has something happened over there? Yes, one of our supply vessels went missing shortly after jumping into the system a few days ago. The last message we received from them said they'd come under attack by several unknown vessels. Then nothing. We figures they got the monster drives were charging. The problem is they were supposed to resupply our only train station in that system. And we're the only ones with enough food and water to spare to go in their place right now, which is exactly where we're heading right after we conclude our business with you, Captain. Understood. I was just curious as I have an old asteroid base over in Alpha Centauri. I don't know what state it's in now as it's been quite some time since I've been there. Plus I'm not sure what the situation is like in Alpha Centauri right now. Last I heard, there still weren't any major settlements or military bases over there. Plus, you guys say the ships were unknown, which seems to suggest that it probably wasn't the Martians. Pirates, maybe. Yes, that is a possibility, but because the system is so sparsely populated, with most of the activity being mom and pop mining operations, I just can't see it being worthwhile for pirates. Or at least I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, my own encounter with Varus and his goons back in the day was brought about more or less due to a combination of coincidence and bad luck. But it certainly can't be ruled out. I'm guessing you haven't received any ransom demands from any of the usual suspects yet. None. But it might still be too soon. Regardless, unless we get out there quickly, 36 of our fellow employees are going to be at risk of starvation. Of course, I'll try not to keep you any longer than necessary. All I really need is just a few more months worth of food supplies, some hydroponics equipment, and any magnesium or uranium that you can spare. Now, whilst I only have about 10,000 credits to my name, my superiors in the Terran Confederation have quite generously offered to pay in my stead. In fact, I have their details right here on my wrist computer for when you need to invoice them. If that arrangement is okay with you guys, of course. That will be perfectly acceptable. And given the regrettable behaviour of my predecessor, Mr. Mendez, I have been authorised to give you a special discount on all mineral purchases that you make with us today. Likewise, I would like to apologise once again for any mistreatment on behalf of my esteemed colleague. And if there's anything else we can do for you in the meantime, then please just let me know. Well, Captain, now that you mention it, there was one more thing I was looking at. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. And it makes the place feel more like home, I think. Well, now that all the cargo has been delivered, and our guests from Interstellar Minerals have finally left orbit, I'd better get out there and help the repair bots with those Kirkland mines. I mean, we should have plenty of time, but the faster we can get those built, the better. Caution, Captain. I have detected multiple jump signatures in lunar orbit, bearing 097 by 073. Copy that, Ben. Son of a bitch, it looks like the Martians are really early this time. And they're coming from a different direction. Damn it, we've only managed to make five of those kill vehicles. Things are gonna get real messy this time. Well, here we go again. Strangely enough, they haven't launched their missiles yet. Regardless, I'd better play it safe. Repair bots 1 and 2, this is Captain Robertson. Please proceed to the plant room immediately. Now this is unusual. They're still on approach. 
Normally, they fire their missiles and jump out well before getting within visual range. What the hell are you lot up to this time? Yeah, nothing good, I bet. Yep, I count five of them altogether, all small to medium-sized. It looks like they have their beacons off. Either that or they're still out of range. Ah, there we go. That closest one is a Cerberus Mark III, an IMDC design. Oh, hold on a second, that says MDR. These vessels aren't from the Martian Navy, they're marauders! Yep, there's a couple of Barracuda B-8s in there too. Those are a well-known marauder design based off an older warship. And finally, bringing up the rear, we've got a couple of Aeolus Mark II Gunstars, or Corvettes as the Martians like to call them. Damn it, this could be serious. I've read Marshal Gordon's report on Bosch Tox Marauders, and these guys are well and truly in the pocket of our enemies. And unlike ROS, they blur the line between mercenary company and pirate gang, which means that these bastards know how to fight. I mean, look at them right now. They're staying just far enough away that my missiles will be next to useless. Yeah, they'll spot them well before they get up there and either evade them or just jump away. Even if I launch all eight missiles, I'll be lucky if I manage to cripple two of them. Yeah, we could be in for a hell of a fight. Captain, one of the vessels in orbit is hailing Moon Base 1. The captain has identified himself as Bosch Talk of the Marauders. So, he's here in person, is he? Put him on screen, please, Ben. Ah, uh, yes. You must be Captain Robertson. I am Bosch Talk. And unless you didn't realize, we have you outnumbered. Why don't you surrender peacefully so we can avoid any unnecessary bloodshed? Yeah, sorry, that's not gonna happen. Yes, the contract on Captain Robertson is for dead or alive. The choice of which is entirely up to you. If you surrender now, I will guarantee you will not be harmed. The same goes for any friends you have in there with you. Ha! <laughs> Your reputation for being a cold-blooded murderer precedes you, Boshtok. You and I both know that as soon as I give myself up, I'm as good as dead anyway. Besides, you have your orders, and I have mine, and right now, those are to defend this place against any and all enemies of the Terran Confederation. And that includes unsavoury characters, like you. I see. And is that your final answer? It is. And as far as I'm concerned, you can take that contract and shove it up your ass. Well, that is unfortunate. Indeed. Moonbase 1, out. Well, that pretty much went the way I thought it would, especially given who we were dealing with. Okay, time to get the defences back up, as it looks as though we've got one hell of a fight in store for us. More so, as I couldn't help but notice that Boshtok was wearing a combat assault suit, just like mine. How the hell did he manage to get hold of one of those? And more importantly, how many more of his marauders have them? They're not doing anything yet, they're just sitting up there. <laughs> yeah, this'll be the calm before the storm. I am surprised that they haven't launched any missiles to soften us up yet, but that might just be due to the fact that those spacecraft that he has up there are primarily assault transports and their escorts. Yeah, I'm guessing they're filled with drones and shuttlecraft, much like the ROS vessels from last week. Except these bastards aren't being anywhere near as careless as their predecessors. Unfortunately. Saying that, I am very tempted to launch a few missiles of my own, just to keep them off balance and to see how they react. I mean, I could easily build more, although that does leave me with two missiles down. Even if it is temporary. Oh, hang on a second. What's that? Shit, seems like I spoke too soon. We've got incoming. Yeah, we got three, negative, make that four missiles inbound. But saying that, it does look like they're going to miss. I mean, they're moving at way too much of a tangent to us. An error, maybe? Well, I'd better get ready to launch the Kirkland mines anyway, just in case they suddenly change course again and come straight for us. That's interesting. Either my eyes are playing tricks on me, or those missiles are actually slowing down slightly. Ah, well that explains it. They're drop pods. 
Yeah, basically disposable landing modules with Marauder Spiderbot stuck on the top. And from the looks of it, they're going to land just on the other side of that rise over there. Yeah, there they go. But why spider bots though? There are not choice for base assault. They're mainly designed for urban pacification and close range anti air defense. They certainly wouldn't be my first choice, as their Gatling turrets are just too short ranged. They would be ripped to shreds before they got anywhere near Moonbase 1. And I certainly wouldn't just use four of the damn things, that's for sure. Nah, this just doesn't add up. There must be more to it. There they are. The spider bots are just appearing now. And is there any movement from our friends up above? Ah, yes, there is. Finally. Yep, it looks like we've got two spacecraft coming our way. And I say spacecraft as, based on their size and how they're manoeuvring, it's probably safe to assume that those are either strike craft or assault transports. And they've coordinated it so that they're coming down at around the same time that those spider bots are appearing. They're still a long way off though. I'd have thought they would have waited until they'd gotten much closer. The reason why is because at this rate the ground units will just be too far away to support them. Unless... Oh shit, I know what they're doing. They're landing just outside the range of our turrets and they're going to lay siege to us instead. That's why they're coming down so far away. Well, not if I can help it. I made sure the Firehawk had a remote control and antenna just for situations like this, where I can also fly it as a makeshift combat drone. The problem is, those are both Wyvern Mark IIs I'm going up against, so the Firehawk probably won't last long, but if I can shoot down even just one of them before they dismount their troops and offload their equipment, then that should slow them down at the very least. Damn it, I'll need to be careful of the crossfire from those spider bots too. Steady, Captain. I'm wasting ammo, I need to wait until I can get a better shot. Ah, this one only has one turret. Yeah, the other two look like they've been switched for heavy cannon or something. It must be a custom loadout. Which is good for us, as we're taking less fire. Except for the damn spider bot. That's okay, I'll take care of you. And focus back on the wyvern again. Gotcha! Excellent. Now I just need to take care of the other one. That was lucky, those spider bots are just getting too damn close. Bollocks! It looks like they've already landed. I just hope I'm not too late. There. Take that, you bastards. Benson, have you detected any more small grid vessels approaching from lunar orbit? Negative, Captain. Good. In that case, I may as well try to get rid of as many of these bloody spider bots as I can. To be honest, the fewer of those things that get within range of our base's defences, the better. In the meantime, Ben, let me know if the situation changes with regards to those marauder vessels in orbit. I don't want any surprises. As you wish, Captain. Hmm, I can't seem to lock on. But that's alright though, because at this range I can just eyeball it. That's the second one down, just two to go. <laughs> that one looks like it may have gotten stuck. Ah, 
And now for the last one. There we go. I may as well finish them off, as the last thing I need is for some headless spider bots to distract the moon base's turrets later on. The first wyvern is well and truly destroyed, even what's left of the front section including the cockpit is a mess. I can't see any sign of any marauders nearby, and there doesn't appear to be any bodies either, but the magazine explosion may have had something to do with that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we got most, if not all of them from that one, so I'm going to check on the second one now. Yep, that's more or less the same as the first one, except... Oh shit, that looks like it could be a tunnel. Damn it, it is. And they've put booby traps near the entrance too, which means we've got marauders hiding underground here. Bloody hell, I'd hoped I had managed to get both of them before they landed any troops, but it looks like I was too late with that one. Shit. The problem is, those things carry eight passengers. Nine if the pilot survived. Well, it could be a lot worse, I suppose. If I hadn't shot the first one down in time as well, I could have been left dealing with over 16 of those bastards. The thing is that even after losing half their initial strength, I very much doubt they're just going to give up, so I need to land quickly and prepare. Caution, Captain. I have detected that the Marauder vessels in orbit are beginning to change position and are powering up their main thrusters. Oh crap. Copy that, Ben. I'm a little preoccupied right now, but I can come out of this if needed. Does it look as though they're coming down to attack us? Negative, Captain. It appears as though they are moving away from Moon Base 1. Yeah, that might be a ruse, or part of their initial manoeuvre before they descend. I'm almost done here, so I'll just finish off quickly and take a look. Thanks, Ben. Yep, that should be fine. Right, let's take a look at what's going on up there. No, he's right. It does look like they're moving away. They're all going at full thrust as well. I mean, did we kill their leader and now they're beating a hasty retreat or something? Surely not. There's no way they can be giving up that easily. Ah, no. I suspect that this is most likely part of some kind of plan they have. In fact, this is probably an attempt to limit any kind of damage I can do to them now that they've dropped off their ground forces. I'm not seeing anything on the surface, but after seeing that tunnel from earlier on, and given how smart these bastards have been so far, I strongly suspect that the surviving squad is going to attack us from below. I mean, let's face it, if I were them, that's what I would do. Well, I do have plenty of ammo, but I'd also better check those new interior turrets I built and close all the blast windows, because things are about to get a little exciting here at Moonbase 1. All the interior turrets are fine, but the entrance to operations still feels a little exposed. So what I'll do is build an embrasure. Probably about here should do. There. It's not perfect, but it should give me a little more cover if any marauders manage to make it this far. All that's left is to make sure that all the blast windows are closed. I've also checked to make sure that the 25mm Gatling turrets still target personnel, so that way if anyone does pop their head up outside, they should get fired upon almost immediately. Probably overkill, but I'm not taking any chances right now. More so since I'm not sure how much in the way of HE weaponry these guys managed to take with them. 
In fact, that reminds me. Benson, let me know if any air vents in Moonbase 1 registers a drop in pressure or oxygen level, if you please. By your command. Thanks. That'll let me know when we've got a hull breach. Most likely they'll just use explosives and blast their way in. But there's always the chance they might try the stealthy approach and grind their way in somewhere unexpected instead. Anyway, that should be them all. I'd better head back down, as I'm really tempted to build some extra barricades next to that embrasure. It just feels Warning. too exposed. Warning, Captain Robertson. I have detected a loss in oxygen level from the air vent in the reactor room. Copy that, Benson. Shit, looks like I spoke too soon. There it is. They've grinded their way in. Damn it. Son of a bitch. They've taken out both turrets in the reactor room. Well, I think I managed to get one of those marauders at least. Warning, Captain Robertson. I have detected an attempt to hack our programmable blocks coming from the control panel of the nuclear reactor. Quickly, Ben, switch them off. Isolate those programmable blocks from the rest of the base. Affirmative, Captain. Bastards! How the hell are they able to do that? Ah, uh, I'm guessing one of their team must be a coder or computer expert or something. Great, that's all we need. Well, the good news is there's nothing happening outside, so it looks like it's just the attack from the reactor room we have to worry about. The thing is, I doubt they'll stop there. They're probably already making their way over here as we speak. Oh, here they come. Good grief, they're fast. I got a couple more, but they're still on their way. Most likely they'll be with us in less than a minute at this rate. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to push forward and rush us as quickly as possible. The airlock up ahead should hopefully prove to be a choke point. So between myself and the turret next to me, we should be able to take out a few more before I have to fall back to operations. The only problem is that whilst operations is relatively secure, it'll also leave me trapped. <laughs> now there's a cheerful thought. I am also aware of how exposed I am from the left and right, so I need to keep my wits about me to make sure I don't get flanked. This is always the most tense part of any engagement. The waiting. Caution, Captain. I am detecting an unauthorized bypass being run on habitation airlocks 1 and 2. Alright, here we go. Clear. Need to quickly reload. See if you guys have anything useful. Ah, I'll take that, thank you very much. That's only about six of them neutralized so far. Where's the rest? They better not still be messing around in my reactor room. Well, there is only a handful of them left now, so if I have... Whoa, what Danger, the hell? Captain Robertson. Gatling turret number two has been destroyed. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It is. How the hell did they do that? Ah, look, they're right outside the dome. The other turrets can't shoot them. Whoa, shit. They've got a rocket launcher. And they're coming through the side. Damn it, I'm a sitting duck down here. I need to go up there and try to hold them off whilst they're still in the doorway. Ah, there's not enough cover. I'll have to use the sliding doors. Yeah, it's not the best, but it'll do. Plus, it means I can fall back to the canteen and use those tables for cover. Here they are. Shit, rocket launcher. Hmm. 
Yeah, he's still there. Damn it. He's probably not stupid enough to use it inside, but I'd rather not take that chance. No, I'd rather they came through this door and I picked them off at close range instead. Yeah, there's no way he could fire that thing when I'm this close. Although it is times like these when I really could do with... Ah, I have an idea. It's a little crazy, but it might just work. There's nowhere left for you to run. Give yourself up now, Robertson, and spare yourself the agony. Ah, Bosch talk. I thought that might have been you out there in the fancy armour. I think I'll make my stand in the bar if it's all the same to you. Oh, and uh, sorry about your men, by the way. Rotten timing and all that. If you'd both coordinated your attacks between your teams slightly better, you might have actually got me. You're a fool. Yeah, well, I've been called much worse. <laughs> he doesn't sound too happy, does he? Yeah, I suspect losing half of his marauders before they even landed kind of threw something of a spanner in the works for him. Most likely he didn't expect me to actually fly out and try to attack them directly. Well, that's okay, because I don't think he's expecting what I'm about to do next either. Yep, that looks fine. Now, I just need to get out of sight. So it's just as well that I didn't put this blasted panel back on. Bloody hell, that was quick. Here they come. Peekaboo, you bastards! Whoa! You son of a bitch! Oh no you don't! Ha! <laughs> that was a little too close for comfort! And what's even better, Boshtok is wounded but he's still alive! There. His injuries weren't too serious and we've pretty much been able to stabilise him and put him into cryo. But to be honest, I think it was his combat assault suit that more or less saved his life. Yeah, Boshtok the Marauder is my prisoner now and I'm sure Terran Intelligence will love to interrogate him later on. I have noticed that he does have some kind of cybernetic implant that's also a homing beacon, but that will need to be removed via surgery later on. Right now, I need to go and check on the nuclear reactor. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Both turrets are absolutely shot to hell, but the reactor itself seems to be okay. Thankfully, it wasn't damaged, and after a factory reset, the software is working normally again. Sadly, there is however a great big sodding hole in the floor and a tunnel underneath it that stretches for about 2 kilometers. But I think we can fill that back in later on today at some point. As I've seen earlier, there were one or two booby traps which will need to be dealt with, in which case I'll probably just use drones in order to... What the hell? Benson, report! Warning, Captain. An explosion has been detected in the medical room, and a loss of oxygen and atmospheric pressure has been registered by the local air vent, suggesting that the hull has been breached. The medical room? You mean Bosch talk? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Copy that, Ben. I'll be there as soon as I can. That son of a bitch, if he is somehow trying to escape, I swear that if I find him, there won't be anything left to save of him this time around. Hold on, that explosion looks like it came from the outside. Yeah, the door's intact. He must have left via the hole in the wall. Damn it, did we miss someone? Was one of the marauders still alive out there? Ben, are you picking up anything on your short-range thermal sensors? Negative, Captain. Wait. Wait. Warning, Captain Robertson. My sensors have detected a thermal spike, suggesting that the nuclear reactor on board the Sagittarius has been brought online. Oh no, no shit. Benson, are you able to override it and shut it down? Negative. I am sorry, Captain. I have been locked out and unable to access the systems on board the Sagitta Reyes. Ah, damn it. Copy that, Ben. If I can get there in time, maybe I can shoot at the thrusters and stop the bastards from taking off. And just hope they haven't brought the weapons online. Ah. 
Ah, shit, they're already taking off. Ah, son of a bitch. It's just too damn fast. I'll never catch up with it now. You've won this time, Robertson, but it is not over yet. I'll see you again soon, Boshtok. Out. Ah, damn it all to hell. What a disaster. Not only has the bastard managed to escape, but he's also stolen our only jump-capable vessel. How the hell did he even manage to do that? And now I've lost a high-value prisoner. Damn it! Come on, Captain, get a grip. Despite this minor setback, this is still a huge win for us. I mean, look at it this way. We've successfully managed to defend Moonbase 1 against the Marauders and inflict some pretty heavy casualties on them. And at the end of the day, my primary objective is to hold Moonbase 1 against any and all attackers. And that's exactly what I've done. So, yeah, I need to focus on the primary objective here and get back to Moonbase 1, as I've got a lot of repairs to do and a whole lot of tunnels to fill in. And let's not worry too much about the Sagittarius, because at the end of the day, I can always build a new spacecraft.